For the Prime Minister, does he have confidence in all his ministers? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, yes. Phil? Oh, the Honourable Shane Jones. To the Prime Minister, when the Honourable Peter Sharples called on the Minister of Local Government to resign if he could not accept the decision to set up Auckland Council's Māori Statutory Board, was he correctly reflecting the requirement of paragraph 5.26 of the Cabinet Manual that reads, any public disassociation from Cabinet decisions by individual ministers outside the agreed processes is unacceptable? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, no. Actually, we've made it clear to Mr Sharple's office that uh, uh, when he makes comments of those regards, uh, he should be doing them as the Minister of Maori Affairs. That's exactly the point he was making, but he incorrectly put it on his ministerial uh, letterhead. Phil Twyford. Did the Honourable Rodney Hyde satisfactorily apply the Cabinet Manual's paragraph 5.30, stating that once a decision is reached by Cabinet, Ministers' statements should reflect the fact that a collective government decision has been made when he said the Auckland Council's Māori Statutory Board should never have been included in the legislation and that he always assumed the National Party would stick to its principle of one law for all and in the event they decided to go against my advice. Mr Speaker, yes, right because he made those comments in his position as leader of the ACT Party. The Hon. Shane Jones. To the Prime Minister. Does the Prime Minister share the view of the Minister of Local Government of no confidence, great doubt, and does he seek, along with his Minister, to dismiss the Māori Statutory Board? The right Honourable Prime Minister. Could you repeat the question, the first bit? I just didn't hear I'd it. ask the Honourable Shane Jones, please repeat it. Does he share the view of his Minister of Local Government of no confidence, concern about costs, and does he seek to dis have the Māori Statutory Board dismissed? The right honourable uh, Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, no, but I do have some concerns about the proposed $3.4 million, given the transition agency made it clear that they expected the costs to be in the order of 400000 To me, $3.4 million seems excessive, and I think that's why the Auckland Council have moved to reduce that number to $1.9 million. I share their view that that number, uh, in terms of funding costs for the statutory board, should be lower. Supplementary. Phil Twyford. Does he hold the honourable Rodney Hyde responsible for Part 7 of the Local Government Auckland Council Amendment Act. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Um, well, partly yes, Parliament's responsible. I, look, Mr Hyde is responsible as the Minister of Local Government, um, and when he's acting in the capacity of the, as Minister of Local Government, I believe he's upheld his uh, obligations. Point of order. Point of order, Phil Twyford. Mr Speaker, this question tries to go to the heart of what Question Time's for. It's asking is the Minister held responsible for the content and the effect of legislation that is passed in his name? That is the intent of this question, and the Prime Minister hasn't addressed it. Um, well, I don't think I... Uh, the question, the, the member should know that really uh, this House is responsible for legislation it passes. And, uh, and, and I think the, the Prime Minister gave, uh, gave a pretty serious answer I don't think he tried to uh, play around with the member's question. Or he just certainly didn't try to attack the member. And I think the uh, Prime Minister could have actually been played a lot looser and faster with such a question had he chosen to. But he chose to try and treat it with respect. And I think that's been a reasonable answer. Uh, the, um, does the member have a further supplementary? No. Uh, point of order. Point of order, Phil Twyford. Um, the issue at, at, uh, at hand, sir, is that the Minister of Local Government has refused to take responsibility for the content of this legislation. But and, order, and if he's not order, no, 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 who order, is? Order, this is not a point of order. The member is now seeking to debate an issue. And he asked a question. Uh, I believe the Prime Minister treated the question fairly seriously. The Prime Minister could have treated the question fairly flippantly had he chosen, given the nature of the question. He chose to treat it fairly seriously. And, and I think that's not unreasonable. But now to try and debate the matter by way of a point of order as to what uh, Rodney Hyde, may, the Honourable Rodney Hyde, may or may not be responsible for is not the purpose of point of order. And uh, if the member has further supplementary questions, he's welcome to order. point of order the Honourable David Parker. Uh, um, uh, Mr Speaker, wh why would uh, the Prime Minister be entitled to answer a question about responsibility of one of his ministers flippantly, which is what the order. Speaker just order. said? Because the simple fact is legislation is passed by this House. And... Uh, and so the, the nature of the legislation is a matter for this House. Of course, the administration uh, of the Act uh, is, uh, is something that the Minister 
is responsible for, but not the Act itself. This Parliament is responsible for legislation. The Prime Minister could have given uh, a, a, a newish member of the House a bit of a lecture on, on responsibility for legislation. He chose not to. He chose to try and give a reasonable answer to the question. But the, question asked, the questioner asked something to do with a matter that this Parliament is responsible for, not the, not the Minister. And that is the, that's, the, that's the end of it. You know, I can't help with that. The member could have worded his question differently had he wished to pursue the matter. But this, this House is ultimately responsible for, for bills that it passes to become acts. Ministers are responsible for their administration. Point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallet. Uh, Mr Speaker, I, I, I agree with both the last points you make, that the, the House is ultimately uh, responsible for bills as they're passed, uh, and ministers are responsible for their administration. But ministers also, as part of that process, have a responsibility for recommending to Parliament uh, amendments, SOPs, the minister sat in the chair for a very long time. And, sir, I think, um, I think it would be drawing you, sir, are drawing a, a relatively long bow to say that ministers don't have responsibility for their actions as the leading legislator on a particular bill. Now, sir, I am of the view that a minister is responsible for the SOPs that he moved for the bill, as Rodney Hyde did, and the fact that Parliament in the end, by a majority, a you know, relatively small majority, agreed to that doesn't absolve him from the responsibility that he took in moving uh, those SOPs, which have now proven, of course, to be slightly I'm disastrous. Order, order the members. I'll hear the Honourable Speaker. Speak to that point of order. It, it, it is an interesting point, except for the fact that if, for example, an amendment was tabled during the committee stages in another member's name and passed, the Minister would still have responsibility for the bill except that uh, the House has determined what is to be in that bill before it proceeds to the next stage. So, so in the end, it is the House that ultimately retains responsibility for the content of the bill once it leaves the House, or, or is signed by the Governor-General, whatever, whatever the correct uh, terminology is. The, the Minister is dead, right, as I, uh, as I respectfully suggest, so are you, Mr Speaker, in the sense that then the operation of that legislation is directly a matter for the Minister concerned. I appreciate the contributions members have made, because it is an important issue, and I'm sure the Honourable Trevor Mallard would have worded his question had he been asking that question a little differently to dig into the issue that it seems the member is interested in. The only advice I can give the member is if he's really interested in digging into particular uh, actions, uh, uh, policy actions the minister has pursued, to ask the primary question, does the Prime Minister have confidence in all his ministers, is not exactly the the most effective way to dig into a serious, uh, the issue that the member has raised with me, he takes very seriously, and I think it's worth reflecting on in asking primary questions. Question number uh, point sorry, of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallard, but and, I do and, want to move on. And, and, sir, I won't go on for much longer, but can, uh, in a way that I think you've been very good at getting ministers to address questions, um, I think the core of my uh, point of order was it addressed. I'm not asking you to, not arguing with you now, but asking you to go away and have a look at it, uh, because, sir, I think that uh, ministers uh, do have responsibility for the things that they move in committee, and prime ministers should be holding ministers accountable for what that. I, I hear the honourable member, and what I was indicating in my in my ruling was that. Had the minister been asked about policy, he had advised on then, and that's what I thought the member was getting at with his earlier point of order, that of course ministers can be asked about policies that they have pursued that ultimately do get incorporated into legislation in this House. But it's the, the wording of the question has to pursue those issues and not pursue matters that are the, that are the decision of the House. Question number, number 11, Melissa Lee.